Hey y'all, Stupid Monkey, I'm back. You haven't seen me in a while, it's because the plane's been crashed. Yeah, I crashed it pretty bad the last time I was out. I uh, nosed it in, I was doing, did a tailspin. Really shouldn't have been flying the plane I was, the way I was flying it. Uh, it's not a 3D plane, it's not a sport plane. <laughs> Just, you know, head got bigger than it really should have been, I guess. Anyway, uh, so I crashed it, destroyed it pretty good. Um, here's the firewall. Well, what's left of the firewall? You know, a bunch of pieces. Here's some more pieces. You know, just, just bent the prop shaft and bent the motor mount. Blew out the firewall pretty bad and uh, just kind of, you know, destroyed things. So what I did was I went ahead and since I epoxied everything to the firewall last time, I couldn't get it to separate. So I gotta fix this. Whoop, hello. Um, I couldn't get it to separate, so I just went ahead and cut the firewall down behind the epoxy marks and uh, transferred the shape of the nose here onto this piece of plywood. I'm going to epoxy this whole piece of plywood onto the front of the plane. The, you know, the, this piece right here, I'm going to epoxy it to the front of the plane after I'm done transferring everything over. And what I'm going to do in order to transfer everything over is I'm actually going to lay this into place here. And somewhere in this bag, I've got the rest of the nose gear, the bottom piece of the nose gear. There it is. So this will sit here, and that should give me the bottom line for where, there, there you go. So then I'll be able to transfer my motor mount holes into, into the plywood, drill it, and run screws in. It's Jamie. Uh, drill it, run screws into it. So that's the way it'll sit. You know, I, I, I think that's the way it's going to go. Before I do it, I'm going to test fit everything and check everything out and make sure it works. That looks about right because how far down this hole is here. You know, here's the top. So we've got, you know, what is that? A good inch of foam. So if we go right here, we've got about an inch before we start at the top of that. And that's about where this sat, this sat just barely recessed up in here. I mean, there wasn't really anything grabbing right here. So, yeah, we're good. We are good. Um, I think we're good anyway. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with this. Kind of get her, get this cut out, and I'm gonna test fit everything and stuff like that. And I will be back with you guys in a second. I'm not going to do a full video on, on it. It's just too hard to do. I don't have a, uh, what do you call it, a camera stand or whatever the heck it's called, a tri tripod. Well, I do have a tripod, but it doesn't work with this camera. So uh, I'm just going to shoot all this stuff, um, you know, piece by piece. Uh, and then I'll post it on YouTube, and you guys will be able to check it out. Uh, as for my RC groups buddies, I'll have it on RC groups as well. Uh, I hope this kind of shows everybody... I mean, another way you can take a destroyed, totally destroyed firewall. I mean, this that's what came out of the plane. That's how it came out. Just, I mean, there's all the foam that stuck to it and whatnot. So, this is actually, this was the bottom. This was right here. Just like that. And that's pretty jacked up. <laughs> it, it sucks. It sucked to have that happen. Actually, it was this side. That was over here. But anyway. Yeah. It, it, was, it was horrible. It was a bad crash. Um, I did pick up an E-Flight Power 25 motor. Um, with When I'm done putting the prop shaft adapter and everything on the plane, um, I shouldn't have any more bent prop shafts, which means I'm not going to have to wait for them to come from out-of-stock nitro planes. It's not going to have to come from Canada, SN Hobbies. I'm definitely not going to have to wait for it to come from Korea. Uh, the the motor was seventy one dollars. Uh, the uh, so I mean I guess it's worth it if considering time savings I'm going to have. I'm not going to have to wait, which in my eyes is is awesome. So uh, most most local hobby stores have the E flight parts, you know so. This is just kind of an upgrade for me. Um, I really like it. If you have a look here, the E-Flight motor versus the GC motor that comes with the airfield 
is just a little bit bigger, you know. So this is an 870 kV. I think it pulls like 500 watts, something like that. So, you know, I'm I'm expecting a little bit more power out of this motor. I it, everybody I've talked to said that this this motor is going to make my plane just freaking crazy fast. I don't know. We'll find out. So uh, it does require a 40 amp ESC, which I've already got. So. Yeah, that's a 40 amp ESC there. So it's 40 amp, 40 to 45 amp ESC. So I've already got a 40 amp. That's I think it's a burst rate of 50 amp. I'm still gonna run the three cell. This is capable of four or three cell. Uh, because of the battery compartment, I'm not gonna be able to fly four cell. It just won't work. But uh, I'm gonna stick with three cell, my 2200 batteries. Also, I did pick up a, where's that, in here, oh, there it is. I got this guy right here off of eBay, transmitter battery. Um, I have put it inside my trans transmitter, and uh, it does work. It is a three cell, I think it's a three cell. Yeah, it's a three cell. It's a three cell 2200 mAh, 11.1 .1 volt battery. Actually, I could fly my plane on it. Um, well, I don't know how long it lasts. It's probably a pretty, pretty low discharge rate. So, uh, um, and it does it does charge on the factory air fill charger. So, you guys are running AA batteries in your air filled uh, radio. This is the way to go. This way, you're not having to buy them. Um, I think I picked it up for like 15 bucks, which is a pack of batteries, pretty much. Uh, I. Here's all my, so I'm getting everything all put back together and we'll see what happens when it's done. All right, I'll be back with you guys shortly. Stupid monkey out. All right, well, I'm back. Um, first things first, if you're using E-Flight motor with the factory uh, motor mount, you have to drill it out. See, the call it for the inside of the E-Flight or for the back of the motor on the E-Flight is a lot bigger. And you also have to drill the holes for the uh, mounting screws in order for them to work. They give you this motor mount right here, but you have to build stanchions and stuff like that off of your firewall. I didn't want to do all that. I really wanted to use this motor mount. Besides that, this right here is a lot of a lot of area um, to try to build a uh, yeah, stanchions out of. So, I use the motor, the factory motor mount. Um, I have finished off my firewall. There you go. That's about it. I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding and get that installed. Uh, other than that, what else did I have to do? Yeah, not much. Not much. So, like I said before, this is gonna go. This is gonna go on just like that. And I'm just gonna epoxy the whole dang thing right to the firewall or right to the fuselage. Um, it should be just as strong as it was before. You know, before the the, the factory uh, mount is just sandwiched in between two pieces of foam. So now this is all gonna be my mounting area, my mounting surface. So if you look here, we've got this sitting there, and everything matches up. You see all the holes go straight through like they're supposed to um, everything works out fine so um, that's all that's all done I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding a little bit more prep work and I will be back to show you guys pretty much a finished product and then I'm gonna put the cowl on it prop back on it there's my prop prop shaft and all that stuff put the cowl and prop back on it after I'm done epoxying everything together I'm using this five minute Quick Cure Epoxy from Gorilla Hobbies. Uh, Walt down at Gorilla Hobbies is a pretty good guy. Uh, helps out a bunch. I've, a lot of the stuff that I have, I have from Gorilla Hobbies. Um, he's just the local hobby store out here. You know, many of the hobby stores you guys go to, uh, you guys probably get can get a hold of all the same stuff I have right local. And that's the reason why I got this stuff. Um, this used to be a uh, Nitroplanes... Uh, Sky Trainer, 
it's it's no longer nitro planes. There's nothing on this plane that is nitro planes anymore. I have replaced everything on nitro planes. Yeah, they're great for getting the plane, but once you have the plane, they're horrible. Uh, you can't get parts, can't find nothing, and when they do have the parts, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's stupid. I just don't like using nitro planes at all. So, you know, I went to the E-Flight. Uh, pretty much all the hobby shops are dealing with uh, Horizon Hobby and um, E-Flight products, so you can buy all your parts from E-Flight. Inside my plane, I've got 9 gram Metal Gear servos on all four of my surfaces. I don't have flaps on this plane, so there's no need for that. Um, I'm also going to be using a Turnigy 9X uh, radio and receiver. So that's, you know, there's nothing here that is, the only thing that's left that is FMS is the fuselage. And that's the only good part about this plane is the fuselage. If it wasn't for the FMS fuselage, I probably would have trashed this plane a long time ago and went ahead and bought something else. I can't see buying Dynam. Everybody ta I've talked to that uses that has flown the Dynam version of this plane. Um, it's five inches shorter, and everybody says it's crap. So you know, if, if everybody's saying it's crap, it probably is crap. So uh, anyway, um, just kind of an update. Let you guys know how far where I'm at, what I'm doing. Um, also, I've got a little thing that I'm about to do for the. Uh, the battery door uh, that was something that broke on my last crash so I'm going to show you guys how I fixed that and uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on and I will make another video here pretty shortly and I'm going to combine them all together give you guys one good shot of you know basically step by step of what I did and again you do have to drill all this stuff out in order to make this work so I did it works uh, I'm pretty happy with it, it came out okay uh, everything turns nice and smoothly there's no rubbing nothing like that nothing I really have to worry about no binding uh, if you do it right it's, it's good to go but all right so uh, stupid monkey just stopped in to stop, say hello <laughs> uh, if you know anybody that's looking for a 3536 900 KV uh, motor let me know it's uh it's the factory motor out of the airfield i've got it i'm selling it you know it's probably i don't know it's it's worth it it's a, it's a good motor prop shafts bent so it's not going to come with prop shaft it's going to be motor only so if you know anybody that wants it let me know hit me up send me a message comment i don't know do whatever you have to do let me know that you want this thing uh, i think that my uh my YouTube is connected to my email, so you can go ahead and send me an email. If you do do this e-flight conversion, you have to change your ESC. A uh, minimum of 40 amp ESC, 45, 40 to 45 is what they recommend. I'm running a 40 amp. I'll let you guys know later on how that works out, whether or not it is pulling too much amperage in flight or what. Uh, props. Uh, the motor calls for between 11, I think it's 11.6 and 14.9 is the is what the directions say that it will hold. I fly a 12.8, so I'm well within the, you know, the, the recommendations. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing together. I'll give you guys a quick look at what happened, what the firewall looks like once I've got it together. I am going to be using the factory mounting screws so these little allen head screws and these you know the wood plugs right here since I'm using a wood firewall those guys are all going inside my firewall I've already pre-drilled the firewall for them so we're gonna we're gonna make all that stuff work we're gonna make it look like we're gonna make it look good it's hopefully hopefully it works out really well we'll find out here pretty soon won't we um, anyway stupid monkey here and just kind of glad that I'm able to show you guys this stuff I will be back with you in a minute. Okay, hey, what's up? Well, here is the motor mounted to the fire, firewall. I used the E-Flight mounting hardware, which comes with the nut certs for the back, for the wood. 
uh, worked out great. Screw straight in. As long as you drill the holes correctly, you shouldn't have any problems. So, if you look, it's got the right hand kick. I guess this would be the right hand kick if you're looking from the top. It's got the right hand kick a little bit down. So, uh, this is this is the way it's supposed to look. Uh, it's all onto the factory airfield motor mount, metal motor mount. So, uh, there shouldn't be any problems there. Uh, what I do is I use, a I use a stick and steel ultra here and I go ahead and put a little bit on the threads uh, to keep everything from backing out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then I'm going to I'm going to mix up some epoxy and mount this into my firewall. Uh, next video you guys see will have the, the firewall mounted to the plane and uh, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the ESC. Do a little bit of testing. I might be able to, might be doing the testing with you guys in video. We'll see how that works out. Oh, you know what? Nope. I forgot. I'm not going to do that yet. I've got to, uh, um, I got to do the, <laughs> I got to, I got to put my nose gear on. So, uh, the nose gear is going to go, you guys know how that goes. But anyway, the nose gear is going to go there. And then we'll, we'll mount it on the plane. So anyway, that was just a really quick another update, and we will moving on. Uh, next time you guys see me, the firewall will be on the plane. All right, all right. See you later. There you have it. There is a complete firewall repair number two or three or whatever it is. I guess it's number two. No, it is number three. But anyway, it's all there. It's all together. We have landing gear again. We have <laughs> we have a motor and a prop all together. Um, I'm not going to run a cow for a while. Uh, I I just don't need it. It's I know it's there to make the plane look pretty, but and until I get one actually arrive here, because I guess it's either got to come from Canada or Hong Kong, seeing as Nitro Planes never has it in stock. So. You know, boo on nitro planes, no nitro planes. Um, so this motor does seem like it's got quite a bit of power. I've run it up a couple times just to see, make sure everything was running correctly and uh, looking good. Uh, it is. So, uh, and it didn't rip the firewall off the plane when I was doing a static run up. So I guess we're we're good for takeoff. I mean, we'll at least be able to get one flight out of it and see what happens. Um, I'm not seeing any separation or anything like that anywhere. But that is complete. And I'm happy with it. I think it looks pretty damn good. So. But, yep. That's the E-Flight on the factory airfield uh, motor mount. I showed you guys already what I had to do in order to make that work. Um, I used a quarter inch birch this time. Um, I lied, I not lied, but I thought that I used 5 16 last time. I didn't, I used uh, 3 16 So I went a full 16th larger. I mean, it's, I guess it's not really much of a difference, but it works. Um, I put the Allen head screws in instead of running uh, Phillips head metal screws or wood screws or whatever they're called. Um, what else did I do here? I did use the uh, airfield screws for mounting it to the firewall or to the motor mount. Uh, they are the same pitch as the E-flight screws. So I ran them. Uh, everything's nice and solid. It's, I mean, really, really, really solid now. Uh, on the back of, on the back of the firewall, you know, they've got those, I guess, I don't know what they are, nut certs or whatever, but they kind of stick into the wood. So I got those in there on, um, you know, Dubro 1.5A uh, nose gear. That's uh, the full setup. This is the same Dubro 1.5A gear I've had on the front of this thing since I first went to 1.5A. Uh, I swear by it, it works great. Um, no need to change it. 
I've, I did put in the Dubro on control, uh, control shaft or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, I would. I guess it's called a control shaft. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's the Dubro control shaft. It's quite a bit thicker um, than the factory nose. Uh, yeah, nose control or nose gear controller or whatever the hell it is. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what you call it, but it's quite a bit thicker than a factory. And then see, it's quite a bit longer. So it's uh, well, shoot, let's see here. Yeah, you can see how much thicker it is than the factory unit. So that's all that. Um, again, I'm using uh, HS55 9 gram uh, metal gear servos in it. I am now using the Power 25 powered by E Flight. So I think that looks pretty cool. I'm going to use the white stickers up on my wings since I've got wing black wings, and uh, or at least where I'm putting the stickers. So I'm. Um, you know, maybe tomorrow I'll get a flight out of it. We'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know, or I'll make video. I'll probably do wing cam video, because if it crashes, I want you guys to see it. So that's a, that's a finished product. Um, I did fix my wing. Uh, the wing was broken as well. Again, I broke the wing in a different spot. I fixed the wing. Wing's all back together. I'm not going to go get that. Well, I guess I could. May as well. <coughs> I'm pretty stoked with the way that came out. It worked out pretty well. Um, the uh, only thing that I could say is if you are gonna do this, plan on you know quite a few hours. It's not something that's really easy to do, and it's it just it just takes time. You know, it takes time to do things right. Uh, it just it I mean just just drilling, uh, making the holes in the firewall. What you call it? I'm sorry about that. Uh, making the holes in the firewall and doing the motor mount mods took me two hours. And I'm a fabricator. Uh, I do it for well, I used to do it for a living. But uh, yeah, for it's for something to take me two hours, it it was pretty pretty intense. So there's my old prop. It's still got mud on it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um. So there's the old motor. I don't know. I'm going to put the wings on here in just a second, CG it, see how it works. Oh, and speaking of the wings, let's see here. You guys already saw the repair I did on the wings last time. So that's the old repair. Um, it just it broke off this corner right here. Right there, you can see it. That corner broke off, so I built that little wood piece to go in the back of the wing. And I glued that back into place. Well, the last time it broke, it broke all the way from right here, all the way up this line here. And then it, so it took off, you know, what is it, two thirds of the wing? So uh, that's all epoxied together. Um, it's sturdy as hell, it's not going anywhere. I've wobbled around a bunch and you know, flapped it around. I'm holding on to just the part that I repaired right here. And it's not going anywhere. I guess I'm probably putting a lot more force on it right now than it'll ever see in the sky. I hope. So that's all put together. I do have, um, what I did was I took uh, barbecue skewers and I ran barbecue skewers into the wing uh, about that far into the repair here and here, and then I ran them both into the wing about, I don't know, what do you say, about five or five inches. So um, about two, two and a half inches into the wing and then about two, two and a half inches. So it's in between four and five inches. I don't know, I just kind of eyeballed them and cut them and put them into place. But they go, there's one here and there's one here. Just kind of hold it together. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, that's it. So I'm going to put the wings on this thing. I'm going to CG it really quick. And uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. 
when I take her out and fly it. I'll let you guys know. And I'm going to post this video here in a minute after I'm done editing. And tomorrow morning you guys have something to watch. Um, this stupid monkey. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down. Whatever. Have a good night. And I screwed in these servo horns on the bottom. I forgot to show you guys this when I was finishing up, but I screwed the four servo horns in. I've still got, you know, the one latch here and then the two pieces that go inside here. This one here broke, but to prevent anything else from happening and hold my battery in a lot better, I put these four servo horns on there. So, you know, really quick couple screws, glued the screws in, and then, you know, now I have a working or working latches. Boom, 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 and I still have a way of grabbing hold of it and lifting it out. So there's that, see? So we'll just, uh, so it goes in just like so, like so, just like so. All right, you piece of shit. There you go. So, and like that, and... Just push these things over and closed and in and battery tray is locked and latched, ready to fly. So just another little thing you can do to help your plane out. See you soon.